Last week we talked about the life of Job. He experienced extreme suffering. He not only experienced emotional suffering with the loss of his children, but also physical suffering with the boils on his body. There will be times when each of us will experience emotional and physical suffering, but hopefully not like the extreme like Job's. What are some physical hurts you may have experienced in your life? Yeah, so sometimes my sons, they leave Legos out on the ground of the house. And sometimes if I'm walking through the house, I'll step on them with my bare feet. Ah, it hurts so much. Right, we all know what pain feels like. But there's also other ways that we can get hurt. Someone can call you a name or you can get left out of something. We get hurt emotionally. So maybe what are some emotional hurts that a person might go through? Yeah, there's things like loneliness and self-doubt. There are also emotional hurts that any of us may go through. And when hurts last for a long time, we call it suffering. And it reminds us that this world is not how it was created to be. It has problems. You see, everything was good when God first created it. Genesis 131 says, pain and suffering did not enter the world until Satan tempted Eve and Adam and they gave in and sinned. Some people have the wrong idea that their lives will just be easier once they follow Jesus. And they just won't have any problems or they'll just magically go away. But Jesus actually told his disciples that they would have difficulties. But he assured them that he would comfort them and they would not be alone. The same is true for you and for me. Bad things will happen because we live in a world of sin. People want their own way and instead of God's way, So can suffering ever be good for us? Yes, through those hard times, we can help to focus on Jesus and grow our faith. It also helps us develop compassion and perseverance in us. James 1, 2, and 3, and verse 12 says, Count it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you meet all kinds of trials, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And then in verse 12 it says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. That's an interesting thought. When we go through trials, we should be happy. More importantly, we should have joy because it helps us to trust in God more. So first, suffering or trials produce joy. Next, we know that when we go through suffering, we're reminded that Jesus is there with us as we go through them. That way we can be closer to him. 2 Corinthians 1, three through five says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort who comforts us in all our affliction, all of our pain, all of our suffering, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For we share abundantly in Christ's suffering, so through Christ we share abundantly in comfort too. Man, that's a great promise from God that when we experience pain in our lives, God wants for us to come to Him for comfort. He wants to help us and for our experiences to help us to be more like Jesus. So the second reason we can have faith in suffering is because suffering points us to Jesus, our comforter. No one wants to go through tough times, but when someone does, God can use that person's pain to help him or her be a better person, to follow God more. He can grow that person into the character that God wants. And through suffering, God can show people that they need him. And then those people can go and help others when they're going through tough times too. Often, when we're experiencing hard times, we feel as though we're alone. But God's word tells us that even Jesus suffered. There's this time when Jesus is praying on the Mount of Olives, the night before he was crucified. He knew he would carry the sins of the world and die on the cross the next day. And so what did Jesus ask God to do? Jesus told God in that moment that he didn't want to feel all that sin 
and to be separated from the Father. But even more than that, his desire was to do what God knew what was best. He was willing to suffer so that you and I, we could have a relationship with God. You see, for Jesus, suffering sometimes had a great purpose. But even then, we know that it hurt. Even Jesus asked if there was any other way that God might take away the pain. Uh, when you are in the midst of suffering, it is okay to ask God for relief or for the suffering to simply just be taken away. But just remember that there's another part to this prayer. Jesus said that no matter what, even with the suffering, it's more important to do what God wanted him to do. It's important to know that suffering and trials is what this world has to offer. In fact, Jesus tells us this. He says in John 16, 33, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. This is the most significant part of suffering. That no matter how bad, Jesus overpowered it. No matter how painful, Jesus has been through it. That means Jesus can comfort us whenever we go through suffering. 